Hi, I'm Daniel Fuller from the Abundant Life Training Center, and welcome to our daily communion meditation, where today we're taking a look at this passage of scripture in Romans chapter 4, where it says that Abraham was fully persuaded that God was able to do what he promised. He was fully persuaded. He got to this place where there was no doubt. He had confidence in it. And that's when he began to see these promises come to pass in his life. So we're going to be taking communion over this today, asking for God to help us get to this place where we are also fully persuaded that he can do what he's promised us to do. So let's get let's pray. And then we'll go through our filters for today. And then we'll go into our time of communion after that. Heavenly Father, I pray for everybody who's watching or listening, their families, their friends, everybody connected to them, and all of our church and governmental leaders. And I thank you for releasing us from darkness and transferring us into the light, into the kingdom of your dear Son. I thank you for your purpose and grace given to us in Christ Jesus before time ever began. I thank you that Jesus was smitten for us so that you could fight for us. And I keep asking that you, the Father of glory, would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we would know you better. That the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened to know the hope to which you've called us and the riches of your glorious inheritance that is in us and the immeasurable greatness of your power to us who believe. The same power that you exercised in Christ when you raised him from the dead and seated him at your right hand in heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And you put all things under his feet and made him to be the head of the body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. If I'll ask you to bless us and to make your face shine upon us, let us find grace and favor in your eyes. Expand our borders and our territory. Expand our capacity to receive everything you've given us in Christ and to let it flow through us so that we do good and are a blessing to people all over the world. Send us opportunities to do good and be a blessing today and help us be sensitive to those opportunities and make the most of them today. Keep your hand on us and help us do today what's right and best in your eyes and do it with peace and joy and confidence in you. I ask you to stretch out your hand to heal and do signs and wonders and keep us from evil and pain. Through the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right, let's go through our filters for today. These filters are short things that I write at the top of my journal every night. As a way to help me stay in rhythm with God, in sync with him. They also help me to filter my decision making, give me little nudges back on the right track. Just in case I ever drift off track. So I like to start with the big picture vision. For me, that's Abundant Life training centers all over the world, making the body of Christ healthy and beautiful. Our program, the Abundant Life Blueprint, it started about 10 years ago for me, when Proverbs 13, 22 changed the course of my whole life. It says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And that verse inspired me to start creating manuals and lessons and teaching for all the different areas of life. Areas like purpose and health and family and finances, order, time, and community. But when I got started, I had no clue where to start. So I began to seek after God. My relationship with him began to grow. He began to show up, began to teach me, began to train me. He taught me this whole new way to live. Completely different way to operate my life. We would make him the source. We would make him the center. We learn how to rest and trust in him. We learn how to walk in the light. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with him and fellowship with one another. Learning how to walk in faith and love and forgiveness and humility. To be thankful in all circumstances. Because we've got God with us. That wasn't easy all the time. Learning a new way to live meant I had to let go of some old ways. To break free of some old patterns. And I began to document what God was taking me through. Turned into a series of books and courses and blueprints and now partners that we have called the Abundant Life Blueprint. And our goal is to build abundant life training centers all over the world that are implementing these blueprints. Communities of people working together in unity. Thriving communities, making the body of Christ healthy and beautiful. 
And this year in 2022, our yearly filter, we've been focused on the year of the beautiful land. In the Old Testament, God told the people he was going to give them the best and most beautiful land in the entire world as their inheritance. And that's symbolic for us of this rich inheritance that we have in Christ. Everything we need and desire is in there. And this year, God's been teaching us to, to hold fast to it, to possess it by filling up the basket of praise. I think in life, we've got two options. We can fill up the basket with the issues and the problems by venting and complaining and pouting. Or we can fill up the basket of praise, praising God for who he is, praising him for all that he's done for us in Christ Praising him for what he's promised us, becoming fully persuaded as we praise him consistently, helps us become fully persuaded that he's willing and can do what he's promised to do. And as we praise him, as we magnify him, helps us to, to keep those things, to possess those things he's given us in Christ. And then this month in October of 2022, our focus has been understanding the times. In First Chronicles chapter 12, it says the people of Issachar, and that name Issachar means reward. The people of Issachar understood the times. And because of their understanding of the times, they knew what was best to do. One of the concepts in our program, The Abundant Life Blueprint, is that understanding leads to knowledge. When you have the fundamental understanding in place, it leads to knowing what to do at all times. And the most important thing for us to understand, I believe, is understanding God's grace. Colossians 1 verse 6 says that the gospel bears fruit in our lives ever since the day we understood God's grace. Understanding that in this new covenant, he's given us grace. He's continually working for our good. Even when we missed it and we feel like we've fallen and come sh fallen short, he's still working for our good. He's working in that invisible realm where we can't see him. He's continually working for our good. And then this week, on our yearly cycle, think of the yearly cycle as a circle of a year, as a 360 degree view of God and who he is and all that he's done for us in Christ. Different times of the year just give us different reminders. And right now we are in day number two of the Feast of Tabernacles, which is like a fall harvest festival. It was a time to rejoice in the harvest, a time to remember for us that God is filling us. He's living on the inside of us. He fills all in all. He's filling us with joy, filling us with the Holy Spirit. We prayed yesterday that God will give us a continual filling of joy in the Holy Spirit. And we talked about this, this uh, lyric from a song that by Toby Max. says, empty never felt so full. We went through the Day of Atonement where we cleared our bodies out. We cleaned our bodies out. And now God's filling them to a new level continually. And part of being filled is becoming fully persuaded, filled up with persuasion that God can do what he's promised to do. Fully persuaded. Let's take a look at this scripture. Romans chapter 4, lives verse 18 actually through 21. It says, against all hope. He had no hope. Abraham, in hope, believed. He had no hope, but he chose to believe. And so became the father of many nations, just as he has been told. So shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he acknowledged the decrepitness of his body since he was about a hundred years old and the lifelessness of Sarah's womb. Yet he did not waver through dis disbelief in the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God was able to do what he had promised. So Heavenly Father, we are asking for your help today. It says Abraham is our father in the faith, I believe in Galatians chapter 3. That just like him, you would help us to get to this place where we are fully persuaded that you are able to do what you've promised. When I think of fully persuaded, I think of confident faith. He was strengthened in his faith. He got his faith to a new level. All that doubt and unbelief removed, fully persuaded. Fully means there's nothing left. No areas of doubt or unbelief. So, Father, I ask for your help today to help us become fully persuaded in you. Because I believe when we get to that place of fully persuaded, that's where these promises begin to really come to pass in our life. 
And we thank you on the night Jesus was betrayed. He took the bread and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take a moment to remember God sent us Jesus. If he would do that, how would he not graciously and freely give us all things richly to enjoy? We'd all missed it. We'd all gone, gone astray. None of us deserved it. And God laid upon him the sins and the iniquities and the punishment of us all. By his stripes, we've been healed. He was crushed and destroyed by God, smitten by God. So that we could be connected back to him. We could be right and holy and perfect in his sight. We could have God on our side. All because of his one sacrifice. And God raised him up from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. And he raised us up together with him, made us sit together with him. He made us one with him. And communion is an opportunity for us to celebrate that unity with him, being joined together with him as one. A time to remember and a time to celebrate that in our lives. So, Father, I thank you for this bread and ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your bread, you can take your bread. Then after supper, Jesus took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. In my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sins for many. It's the forgiveness of sins that releases us from darkness and transfers us into the light, into the kingdom of Jesus. And he's a great king. His blood washes us and cleanses us, gives us a fresh start today. We get to walk out this day today together in partnership with God, in a covenant relationship with him. He'll never leave us or forsake us. He's working for our good. Becoming fully persuaded of that. So, Father, I thank you for this cup and ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. Be reduced, you can take your juice. All right, let's talk about some health and fitness tips because I truly believe, well, after our time of communion, we usually talk about some health and fitness tips. Because I believe exercise, physical exercise, is a physical representation of exercising our faith. Now notice this, Abraham was not weakened in his faith, but he was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. Strength, one of the most important parts of fitness. Let's get stronger. How do you get stronger? You practice consistently. Consistent practice. It's getting to the place where your body's fully activated. That we increase strength. But I hope this has been helpful for you today. If you'd like to be a part of what we're doing in the Abundant Life Blueprint, you can go to the Abundant Life Training Center.com.